okay, after watching that, Vincente Luque, after having that massive brain injury, it's weird, his fight IQ has improved massively. For example, look at that Jeff Neal fight. He was being backed up a lot with that left cross and all Vincente Luque had for it was just to hold up that high block and just cover, not really shoot for takedowns against a guy who's forward pressuring him, which was strange because against a better grappler known as RDA, he has done everything what you probably would have picked RDA to do in the fight. Shoot low for the takedowns, try and get him down to the ground, but it was the complete opposite. We had Vincente Luque, although he was being backed up, Dos Anjos would shoot for the takedown, but he showed extremely good takedown defense by level changing low on the ground so that he couldn't interlock the hands behind the legs to the point where he could just hold him down and get him to top mount. Because if you look back at that Brian Barberena fight, look at how easy he was able to get his hands behind and trip him down to the ground. He was not able to do that against Vincente Luque. And one thing you've got to look at in the fight was the size. That was a huge problem for Rafael de Sanos because with Vincente Luque being bigger, when he's shooting for the takedowns, it's common sense. You're not going to be able to get them with ease. So despite how technically he is at getting takedowns, it's so much harder to do it against the bigger guy. And that's why I'm saying in grappling, size means a lot. So he had to go to the striking where he actually did look good in the first round. And I do believe he had the better striking exchanges, especially with the hook. Try and circle him off to the left and then apply that forward pressure to back him up against the cage before shooting for the takedown. But what I like about this new Vincente Luque is he's very patient. The old Luque would have been coming at him, trying to throw like a wide hook, trying to get that knockout from the start. But ever since that brain injury, it's making me think he's going to be more cautious with what he does in the octagon, for example, I think he's gonna turn out to be more of a grappler. But one thing I wanna give RDA credit for is the amount of times he's able to use elbows. It reminds me a bit of the Leon Edwards against Rafael Dos Anjos fight. If you look at it in the clinch, the amount of times Leon was able to catch Dos Anjos with the elbows, he was working it against Vicente Luque, but not only in the clinch, you even saw him go for some like unorthodox jumping elbow into a level change into a takedown. It was creative from him on the feet, but like I mentioned before, the size and the takedown defense of Vincente Luque was making it harder for him to do it, but his boxing on the feet looked much more improved. And remember, he's not really a striker at the end of the day. He's more of a grappler with a base level of boxing, but he was able to use the elbows as a more alternative striking method and it was working effectively in the first round. But one of the things I wanted to bring up about Luque was the way he was able to take the Sanyos down. It was like a very unique method of taking people down because usually when you go for a takedown you see them go for different types of variations you go to the single leg maybe you want to switch it into a high crotch maybe you want to go for a double leg body lock all of that but he was going for something even more unique by dropping his head down extremely low where maybe you could get caught with a guillotine but he didn't need to worry about that because Dos Anjos wasn't really looking to threaten submissions. He was really looking to defend against the takedown. So Luke would drop down low like he's gonna go for a double leg, then transition it into like a single leg. But instead of committing fully to a single leg, he was grabbing the ankles because if you look, you can see he's got those ankle straps on. So we could use them like the corners of it to pull him down to the ground. And that was like a very high IQ thing from him. Now, like I've mentioned before, I don't really expect that from Luque, but today he has shown how good his fight IQ is because the Sanyos is quite smart when it comes to defending against takedowns. I know he's had some fights in the past, like the Michael Chiesa fight and the Kamara Usman fight where he got spammed with the takedowns, but usually he's all right at defending against them. The way Vincente did it with the ankles and using that to transition to the back instead of trying to like, hold the wrists a bit like how Driscus de Plessis tries to grapple, it looked good in my opinion. And pair that with pushing him up against the fence, that is kind of hard on your cardio, plus you've got the bigger guy on top of you, even harder on your cardio, plus you are the smaller guy in the weight class, putting on extra size isn't also going to benefit your cardio. It was just the perfect approach to the fight from Vincente Luque. And all of that is good, but the one downside I have with Luque, which I think he does a lot, is there isn't that much footwork. Usually he's just going to go backwards. Like when Desanyos is coming forward, he should be looking to circle away from the cage because you don't want Desanyos shooting on you. I know you can reverse those positions and then use that to your advantage, but usually you want Desanyos to be backing up. And that's why he had better success when he started to use that jab and make Dos Anjos go backwards. And when he started getting the rhythm and coming forward, that was when he saw even more success. But one thing I'm worried about is 
with the striking. He's very good at moving his head when he throws the punches, but when he is like going backwards, like I mentioned before, he doesn't tend to always move his head. That's why you saw Dos Anjos a few times in the fight, and I know it's a fight and you're gonna get hit. Catch him with that left hand that would then make him back up against the cage, which would then lead to him shooting on the double leg or going for a takedown. But that being said, it isn't that big of an issue because Vincente Luca's got a very good ground game. But it's just one thing I'd look at and say he should look to back his opponent up against the cage and then shoot for the takedowns because look at how good his takedowns was. He shouldn't really be waiting for his opponent to shoot on him. He should be the one shooting on him even though Dos Anjos is the better grappler. But in this fight, it looked like Luca was the better grappler. For example, look at round four. Vincente Luca started coming forward, popping out that jab, throwing a few feints, which would then bait Vincente Luca to throw his rear hand. But because Vincente Luca is quicker with the speed, especially because he's a bit younger, he's able to beat him to the punch and catch him with a cross, back him up against the cage. And mate, Dos Anjos looked to counter, and he did catch him with a good hook right here but not with that much power because he couldn't really generate it because he's eating a punch. He's not really looking at the target when he's throwing it. So yeah, he lands it, but it doesn't do that much damage to Luque. So as he's coming forward, you even see not to Sanyos actually go for a takedown, but initiate the clinch. But all that allows Vincente Luque to do being the stronger man is push Dos Anjos up against the cage and go for that level change and get the takedown. Yeah, he didn't get the takedown here, but it was the right approach to doing the fight using the clinching. Make the smaller guy tired by weighing on top of him. And it just was a good performance all round, like using some of the wrestling attributes, like getting him in the cradle, looking for Kimura reversals, looking for like a guillotine reversal at one point. It was like a wrestling dominant performance where he didn't really have to use that much of the striking, even on the ground. He was just looking to secure the positions and hold him, a bit like Bilal Mohammed, which is why I think some of you might even have found the fight a little bit boring, but I didn't find it boring compared to Bilal Mohammed fights that I've seen in the past. And that was probably because Dos Anjos was able to make it competitive in terms of, yeah, he was able to get him down, but he would look to bounce straight back up to the feet. And one more thing quickly, with Rafael de Sanos in round 5, he did something that Rob Font did last week. When you're being out grappled and you're being dominated in a decision loss, you do not go out in that last round and try and grapple and get the takedown. Especially if you're a guy like de Sanos who can do jiu-jitsu but you're not going to submit Luque like that. Not in that type of form, not the bigger guy who's got better cardio at this point in the fight. You need to look for a finish and look for a KO. But he didn't and he shot for the takedowns and that just enabled... Luke to hold on to him against the cage and just make it harder for Dos Anjos to actually do any damage or do anything that can get him the win. So I don't think Vicente Luque will become champion, but I think he could be a hard fight for some of the fighters in the rankings, like the people who struggle with takedown defense. So you might laugh at this, but a fight I'd like to see in the future is him and Jack Della Maddalena. After watching that Basil Hafiz fight, yeah, if Jack Della Maddalena can pop up that jab and push him up against the cage, it could be an easy win. But in my opinion, if Vincente Luque can work the takedowns like he did against Rafael de Sanos, he could be in trouble if he was to fight a guy like Vicente Luque. Like, we know Jack Della Maddalena has been caught in submission attempts and Vicente Luque will look to be more aggressive with the jiu-jitsu. So I think that would be a good fight to make in the future. And yeah, a good win to have after having that massive brain injury. So thank you for watching. Talk to you soon.